Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are, yes, you've guessed it, continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and we have another rental team from one of you fine viewers. So thank you so much uh, for all the submissions that we've had and a big shout out to Draco, which is DK Trading Court is his handle on YouTube. He has sent this team across to us and we are very grateful for it because it looks uh, very spicy in particular. Now, on face value, it is very similar to a lot of the kind of standard Kyoga uh, Tornadoes teams, but you have to say that the bear tick sticks out like a sore thumb here, and it seems pretty exciting to play because it does have the ability Swift Swim, and it is going to be able to take advantage of the rain that the Kyoga brings to the field, and it does have the Assault Vest as well to give it a little bit extra stability on the field. So you've got Throw Chop, you've got Liquidation to take advantage of the rain, the rain boosted Liquidation, they're going to hit like a truck, you've got Play Rough, and then you've got that stabbed icicle crash as well which is going to be good against a number of things in this format so i'm really excited to play the bear tick the other kind of components of the team are pretty standard and very reminiscent of something like santini's um players cup team uh, or was it invitational team which whichever one it was we know about it. but you got the weavile there for that fast fake out the faint the lash out the triple axle and then you got the serena there as well with the queenly majesty really helps support against things that are going to try and uh, get those priority attacks on you especially with things like bear tick with that swift swim especially if the rain's on the field and then the kyoga with that choice scarf as well which can really catch opponents off guard we've got speed control in abundance from the tornadoes with the tailwind there a way to set our weather back up if we come up against anything like Groudon and then Icy Wind as well as additional speed control which helps us out a bit and then the old good old Rillaboom sitting in the back there doing these things. So there's the rental code. What we'll have is a couple of games with the team now and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode. So I'll sit back. Hope you enjoyed today's episode friends. Hopefully we can get some good action with Bear Tick today. That's a big wish from myself um, and if you've tried Bear Tick out already I don't know how many of you would have in this format. Let me know down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. But without further ado, friends, let's get into game one of today's episode. Okay, first up today, we have a Latios, a Rillaboom, Suicune, Zacian, Incineroar, and Landorus Incarnate. So this is kind of a standard looking Zacian team. You'd normally maybe see the Latias on there, but Latios being the option for Tyler Durden right now. Um, it's a nice looking team. It's going to be difficult. Um... They're going to Tailwind with the Suicune. That's their main source of speed control. They're going to have potentially Icy Wind on something like the Latios. We go Rillaboom, Olga, Tornadus. We need to keep up with the, the, the Trick Room. And then we'll go Bear Tick as well, I think, as well as our last one. We could go Serena, but at the same time... Is Serena going to really provide much other than just blocking the Fake Up from the Rillaboom? And the answer is probably no, whereas the bear tick can probably put on a little bit more offensive pressure, especially if we can keep the rain up on the field. Now we do see Rillaboom and Incineroar come up for my opponent. Um, they've got to suspect, they have to suspect the Serena switching. They do. They, it's like, they have to. I don't like these situations though, because it's like who, which, which really booms faster than the other. You know, we're going to be faster than the Incineroar for sure. But are we able? Are we going to be able to get a fake out into their really boom? And then I think we lock in with Water Spout to be honest, because if we can get rid of the Incineroar, it's a Pokemon down from my opponent's side. It makes it limits their ability to uh, to function here. Um, we should be able to fake out into the Rillaboom block of potential Grassy Glide. And you've got to think that my opponent's probably thinking, do I fake out or Grassy Glide here? Because the fact that there could be a Serena switching in from the back makes it a little bit more difficult. So that's what we... Uh, they are going for the fake out. So they're just going to trade fake outs, which is fine. Which is fine. We don't mind this too much. But we have to pull a switch this next turn. We can't allow Kyogre to sit on the field here in front of this in front of this boom. So I think we'll go for the U-turn into the opposing red boom. Um, and we'll bring in Tornadus. But Kyogre, just to sap up this potential grassy glide that's gonna come in here. Or wood hammer. We may just see pivots out, you know. I would imagine the Incineroar probably parting shots out at this point. 
Oh, just a solid, just a hard switch. It's into Latios. Okay. But it may give us the option to bring Kyogre back onto the field, especially if we see... Uh, we're not going to be able to see if this, this really boom goes for a U-turn. I would imagine that's probably what we will see. Like, I think we just bring in Bear Tick, to be honest. Because it does give us a way to kind of put a lot of pressure onto that Latios this next turn. It is the U-turn, so we could have brought in Kyogre here. Bear Tick taking an actual big chunk of damage from that, to be honest. Um... Maybe Incineroar coming back out. Yeah, that fake out pressure. What's this Latios gonna do? I mean, we do have the Assault Vest on Bear Tick, but I think the one thing that we probably want to be a little bit wary of is the fact that we are intimidated. Um, We could bring in Kyogre. I think a hard switch to Kyogre and potentially go... Um... Probably gonna get faked out into Tornadus anyway. But they may fake out the Bear Tick to protect the Latios. And just go like Icy Wind. Oh, they're just pulling a hard switch straight into. Oh, Zashin's coming in now. Okay. This actually works out alright for us. If we don't see a parting shot and we see a fake out into Tornadus, this works out perfectly for us. Yeah. That's that's like uh, even better. So we get the tailwind up as well. Okay, well that's that's really good because they're gonna have to reposition Incineroar to to re really boom now. So we can kind of hard go into that that we can go Water Spout and then go Hurricane to really punish the Incineroar switch to really boom here. And if the the, the Incineroar stays in, then Kyogre takes it down. The Hurricane gets redirected. But you can say I think the Zashin probably protects here right now but the rillaboom has gone they are going to be able to get um incineral back onto the field wow they don't even protect zashin that's nuts that is actually nuts um wow did not expect them to not protect the zashin here that's actually crazy kyoga may go down yeah yeah okay not ideal we're locked into water spout as well, so it's, we're not in the best of spots, really. But I wonder if a water spout and a hurricane would be enough to get the Zash in. And Latios coming in. Okay. We could just Icy Wind. I mean, what are our options? Bear Tick coming in. Don't really want Bear Tick coming in. I don't really want a pup. Pull. I mean, Incineral is a bit annoying to deal with, and especially because our rain will be ending soon, so we've got to bear that in mind, I think. Rain's ending in one turn, so yeah, I think we're better off. Let's bring in Rillaboom, and let's go for... Hurricane's not going to be enough, but they may Icy Wind, so at least we could match that Icy Wind if they go like Icy Wind with, with Latios. And a Grass Glide should get the, the Zashi in the next turn. Zashi just protecting. Are we going to just see an Icy Wind from the Latios here? So our Icy Wind in protect and do a bit of damage to that Latios. Not a massive amount. See more than I thought it would. So you drop the speed there, which is going to be useful going into the next turn. The Thunderbolt. Okay. So it was going after the Kyogre. Um... But you've got to imagine... Yeah, I think we just double in on the Zashin slot this next turn. A Grassy Glide and a Hurricane. Oh, do we Hurricane? Um, hmm. It's a little bit risky Hurricaning. Um, and especially because we know... That the Thunderbolt's there and it could come into to Tornadus now. And it's an easy play for my opponent just to go Thunderbolt into Tornadus. I think, and bring Incineroar in. Um, so I'd be more, I'd be more tempted to go U-turn into Latios, and then I think we could Rain Dance again. And then if we lose Tornadus here, then at least we get Bear Tick onto the field. Actually, what we're gonna do is 
Just fake out Zashin. And Rain Dance, I think, yeah. Yeah, okay, so Incineroar we're gonna come in here. <laughs> Cause then the next turn we're gonna be able to Tailwind. Cause our Tailwind pit is out now. And to really get the most out of Zash in here, we're gonna need to get the Grassy Terrain back onto the field. Because the Rain Dance means that we don't necessarily need to we don't need to um like pivot in Kyogre specifically to get the rain up, which makes it easier so we can let something go down and potentially then, um, yeah, I think we'll just U-turn into Incineroar and we will Hurricane into Incineroar as well. We'll double enter that slot because the Zashin's going to be, e we're going to be able to deal with the Zashin pretty easily once we get Kyogre onto the field. There's a fake out into Tornadus, yep. Behemoth Blade. Are we able to take this? I don't know if we are, you know. I think this probably takes us down. Oh, it definitely takes Tornadus down. But like I say, it does open the door for us to get Bear Tick and Kyogre onto the field now, which is good. Yeah, and we, then we've got Rillaboom in the back to kind of bring in if we need to. But I think we should be alright. And Bear Tick now on Intimidate, it should be able to do a lot more damage. So we can just go Liquidation into the Zashin and then go Scald into the Incineroar slot. And that should lock up this game, hopefully. Because Bear Tick will be able to deal with. Uh, a Scald should be enough. Yeah, a Scald's going to be enough to get the Incineroar and a. Liquidation in the rain and intimidate. It should be enough to get the Zash in. You would hope anyway. If Bertic fails to get the Zash in here, I'd be very upset. It may just protect here, you know. But we'll kind of, yeah, we'll pin my opponent down really at this point. And the next turn we can just scold into Zash in and Icicle Crash into Latios because it's so low health now. Where even if Incineroar comes in on that Zash in slot, the Skull going to be able to kind of clean it up. And this is where the Kyogre kind of comes into its own with the Scarf. Doesn't really care so much about Tailwind being up or needing that speed control. It's kind of just good to just click buttons at this point. And it's always nice, I think, when you are using uh, Scarfed. Ooh, okay. So we're all coming back in. Going to be able to take this Icicle Crash. But... Yeah, we're going to have to reposition a little bit if we want to sweep with Kyogre. It does make it a little bit difficult, but I mean the fact that we're going to be able to get rid of Zashin makes things, makes life a lot easier for us, for sure. Thing is, Icicle Crash should be strong enough to get the Latios from the range that it, it is right now. So we could switch Kyogre out to Rillaboom. And then just Icicle Crash into Latios. Because Latios doesn't really threaten us. I think the worst like the, the worst case scenario in that play would be fake out into Bear Tick. But I and then and then double in. But we've got the assault vest there. So I, I honestly think they're, they're more likely to fake out into the Kyogre to preserve their Incineroar here and go for the Thunderbolt as well, maybe. But probably not. Thinking fake out probably enough to take it down. Scarfed Kyogre. I do love Scarfed Kyogre. Really do. It is a very good Pokemon, but it plays so differently from like non Scarf. Okay, Rillaboom in, fake out into yeah, into the Ogre, so we'll be able to remove that. Latios with the Bear Tick. Bear Tick getting some action in this game. This is good. Uh, we take it down, and now it's going to be Liquidation. Uh, probably not U-turn. I don't think. I don't want to switch in Kyogre at all. I think we just wait. By that time, get Kyogre onto the field as soon as something on our end goes down, and then we can just remove the Incineroar pretty easy from that point. So there's no pressure for us to, to start switching around right now. We can just be quite patient with what we do. Um, can fake out this turn, though. That's always going to be useful. And then a liquidation. We'll see how much this does. Minus one. 
it's not going to be a knockout by any means. I wouldn't have thought we'd even knock it out in the rain, to be honest. I think the one thing about Bear Tick is, like, I do like Bear Tick a lot, but it's very underwhelming. It doesn't hit as hard, and it really suffers to intimidate uh, cycling. So, and in this format in particular, uh, it's, um, it's not ideal. But great game to Tyler there, and uh, we're off to a nice start with the team today. So we'll jump into game two, friends. <laughs> Okay, next up we have Luke playing a team of Ndidi Female, Xerneas, Reggie Alecki, Stack Attacker, Tokol, and Crocodile. Um, this is actually alright because we can lead Tornadus. I think like we've got a free free option here where we can lead Tornadus. Um Kyogre. Um we'll get big damage on the thing. I think the only thing that you'd need to watch out for here would be the Reggie Alecki. And if Reggie Alecki has something like um, it has something like Sash, it would make it awkward. The other option here is maybe go something like uh, Weavile, because then at least, oh, Rillaboom to potentially be honest, because mm, then we have the fake out, and we can keep the speed control in the back for later. Yeah, I think Weavile, Auger here, uh, we've got Rillaboom. And I think Tornadus is probably our best one for the late game. Unless they go down a Trick Room route, which would be bad for us. Because then that leaves us a little bit open um, to get in the Trick Room up. Whereas Bear Tick would be alright and Serena would also be not a bad option. But I think I'm going to go for Torn. Overall, yeah. Let's go Tornadus. Because I think the Taunt might be quite useful. Maybe. Let's see, let's see, let's see what Luke goes for. This team's pretty scary though, it's got like really good offense on the uh, on both ends of the spectrum, you know, the top end with the uh, the fast things like Xerneas if it's set up, the Reggie Alecki, uh, and then the, the other side of it with the stack, which which makes it very difficult to deal with. Um, I think here what we're probably gonna see is wide guard from the stack attacker. Now if it doesn't wide guard, it's in a little bit of trouble. What you could potentially do is predict as well. Predict the tall call coming in. Um, and then trick room is being set up. Is it too obvious to, to fake out the Regieleki here? I mean, probably. I, I really do think that the Regieleki probably switches out here. But we can't really afford to take the risk and not fake out into that slot and it actually stay in and just go, yeah, they just go for an attack and then we lose Kyogre. Gonna air balloon. Okay. Well, this should be. Okay. It's gonna be a quick one for game two today. Um, yeah. I really expected Y God maybe there and then the Torkoal to switch in for the Regieleki. Could have been an option where we would like I'm tempted there to go for the faint, but if we went for that, we would have been in a lot of trouble. We lose Kyogre and then Stack and Sucker probably gets a trick room up, so you can see why we wanted to do the play that we did. Um, Xerneas coming in with Ndidi, so that is uh, we've got follow me direction here, but it's it's still not really too bad because we just walked a spout and um, probably. Is the psychic terrain not even set up? There's no psychic terrain. There's no psychic terrain. What? 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 Uh, we can lash out or we can triple axle. I think we probably got triple axle into the Xerneas. Yeah. And then if they redirect, then we guarantee the knockout onto um, DD. It's actually got fake out. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is not good. Triple axle. Hopefully hits three times. One more. One more. One more. That's all we need. Oh. Fake out indeed. I've been hard. I've been hard. I've been hard. Wow. <laughs> fair play to my opponent. No, like in all honesty, fair play. That is a, a yeah. I just yeah. I don't even register that indeed he has um fake out. So we are in a bit of a bind. We need to get Kyogre. We need to get Kyogre in a tailwind to do some work. I think we have to sacrifice Boom and Weavile to do this, to do it. Uh, we can go for a triple axle, but they're just gonna dazzle gleam, I think, here. 
which is not ideal. Surprised at the, I was so surprised that they're not a psychic to it. And I was like, oh, what? And then they totally beat down on us. I'm like, it's going to be an easy, quick one. It's not. It's going to be. It's flipped on its head now. It's going to be a quick one for my opponent. I don't know if we're going to be able to to do very much now. Maybe Boom takes a dazzle, you know, unless they Moonblast. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll get the triple axle off. Boom ain't taking that any day. Um, right. Triple axle. Is it going to be enough to get the DD? No way. No way. No way. No way, friend. And the uh, grassy train not doing us any favors right now. Um, we are in serious trouble. We are in serious trouble. Is a water spout, is it going to be enough to get the, the ogre? I don't know. But the thing is, what we can do now is tailwind. How many turns of rain have we got left? Two. It's not really a lot, but we can go for the triple axle. We will get this off. So they've got to follow me here. So we'll get rid of the Ndidi. They can dazzle and gleam. They can dazzle and gleam. They can dazzle and gleam. But a full power single target water spout might be enough to get the Xerneas. That's what we got to hope for here. Um... Triple Axel will get the DD. Yep. Can the third one hit the Xerneas, please? Come on, it should work like that. Doesn't though. Dazzle, dazzle. Can anything take this? It'd be huge if something hangs on. Nothing hangs on, nothing. Nothing survives the deer. Oh my God, it's gonna be down. Yeah, we've got one turn of rain left. We need the rain. We need the rain to get the Xerneas, I swear. We do. We. I, I think we have to lock into Scald. Because if they protect, if they protect now, then we're in trouble. But it's whether or not they look. It's whether or not they look at the... Because um, I think a water spout will get them. But if they protect and then the rain runs out, it's whether or not they look at the weather. Let's water spout. Let's water spout. Let's lock it in and hope they don't protect. No! <laughs> They've done it. I don't even mind losing this, to be honest. Because we are going to lose it now. We needed to lock in the Scald on that play. I mean, yeah, water spout's not going to be enough. No way. No way. We need the rain boost to get it. Unless we crit, of course. We can pray to the gods. But then I feel a bit bad because my opponent's got a new tech that I haven't seen before. And I really do like it to get the Xerneas working. And the DD without the, the Psychic Train is a really nice, really nice tech. So I've got to take your hat off to my opponent for that. And uh, they get the crit to... Uh, to uh, just rub it in for us asking for it. So, very good game to, uh, is it Luke? I think it is Luke. Uh, yeah, very good game and amazing tech there. What a backwards and forwards game, but a great one to end on today. Honestly, uh, I am a little bit sad that we lost when I always am, but I'm not sad at all that we get to see uh, that little uh, tech there from Luke, which was phenomenal. So we'll jump over now and remind you all of today's rental team. Here's the rental team from today's episode. I hope if you try it out, you have a lot of fun with it. Um, obviously, the bear tick is the big star of the show, I feel anyway. But Scoff Kyogre in general is a really nice uh, Pokemon to just play around with in the format in Series 10. Uh, in the supporting cast as well, works so well well with it and uh, that last game was a lot of fun um, but just watch out if you come across any non-psychic terrain deities you know what to look out for now sorry luke we've probably bust your strategy wide open especially for the ladder but i'm sure it'll work regardless anyway so uh yeah if you do try the team out do have a lot of fun with it big shout out to dick here trading and draco for the team today and uh, we'll wrap things up there friends so leave your comments down below let me know what you think thoughts are on today's episode on the team as well and uh, if you have tried it out and um, i will see you all for another episode very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye